All right. Uh, so let's keep kicking here. We we were doing some file I/O last uh, uh, last class, and um, today we're going to uh, kind of pick a format that we might store our rooms and exits in the file for, and we're also going to talk about string parsing. All right. Let's see. This guy right here. All right. So at the end of class last time. Um, we started filling our text file, this map.txt, uh, up with our room names. Now, I, I, I want to remind us uh, again that what we're doing here in terms of our uh, um, text file is, is a pretty old school approach where we're basically having a proprietary uh, way of representing our data for our map. Uh, in this text file, a much more modern way of doing this would be using a format called JSON. Um, I think I showed it to you last time, but if I uh, I'll just do a JSON example here, and you'll see kind of what this uh, guy looks like. So this is kind of an example of uh, what a JSON document looks like. It looks a lot like what people or programmers are kind of used to. It supports collections of things uh, as well, well as a bunch of name value pairs. You can parse JSON with Java. The issue is, is that the uh, best parsers for JSON for Java are external libraries. And um, uh, the focus on what we're doing right here is not JSON. So I'm Kind of bypassing us having to use a third party library to accomplish this and just reading in some from some some text. Okay. So I just kind of wanted to preference preface that and say this is not the ideal way of representing stuff in a text file. It just kind of is our current hack uh, for it. All right. So when we look at our rooms. We see that to build a room, all we need is a name. And then what we do is we start linking rooms together through exits. So our exits are gonna be more involved, okay? So now what we have to do is we have to start listing our exits. All right. So we're going to go through here. We're going to start putting our exits into this file. So we're going to have an exit between our laser cutter and our lobby, and we have to decide how we're going to represent that in a file. All right. So my next section is labeled. We just call it lab. Oh, lab two, lab one. Do I already have lab one in there? Oh, there it is. Okay, got it. Uh, we shouldn't have to. Yeah, because it's going to read this whole thing and it's a string. What we looked at last time. I mean, you could remove it if you wanted to, but this is going to be the string lab two because we're using that next line from scanner to read in. The whole screen. Um, okay, so going back to our exits here, let's just look at this exit between laser cutter and lobby here. So this is a single exit that has a direction leading towards laser cutter and a direction leading towards lobby. And those guys have directions associated with it. So we need to come up with some way of how do we represent this exit in text. So maybe we do something like laser cutter north. That is, if we take this exit to the north, we go to the laser cutter and then lobby to the south. Something like that. So this string would allow us to, we hold all the information we need to create a um, exit 
to those, uh, uh, we'll create an exit that involves those two groups, right? We look at exit, the constructor for exit. This guy takes in a room destination. It takes a string leading to that destination, takes another room and another string. So in my text document here, here's the name of the room, which we could then use to look up the actual room that was built up here, along with the direction leading to that room, the name of another room, which could then be used to look up the actual room that we built from up here, and then the direction leading to that guy. All right, we'll go ahead and put one more exit in here just as an example. So we'll go eSports to lobby. So eSports, that's to the west. Lobby to the east. All right, makes sense what we're kind of doing here. So you'll want to go through and finish filling out this file with all of those individual um, uh, exits. All right, but for right now, I'll just leave it with just those couple. You can, so we don't spend more class time uh, doing that. All right, so now we'll go ahead and we'll read in from this file. It's a reminder to how that might be working. So here's my file input stream for my map.txt. Here's my scanner. I'll go ahead and get rid of that count. We don't need it. As long as there is another line to read in, we will uh, read that line in. Now we happen to know that in this file, we have two different places where we've designated that anything after this until you read in another line is going to be rooms. And then we hit exits. And then after that, you're going to be reading in exits until the end of the file. All right. We have um, came, we have come up with our own proprietary format for this file that describes our rooms and our exits. All right. So as I'm reading stuff in from this file, I'll go ahead and just give myself a, a variable called line of type string. I'm going to set line is equal to input dot next line. All right, so now we want to ask a question. If it's if the line we just read in is the line that says rooms, this guy right here. If that's the case, then I want to move into rooms mode. The next lines I'm going to be reading in are going to be lines associated with rooms. Okay. So we'll create another string here. We'll call this guy current mode. And we'll just start off with a negative one because we're not in any mode yet. In fact, actually, well, why don't we just say no mode? We're in no mode right now. All right. So we presume that the very first line we read from this file is going to set our mode. So no mode is something we'll actually never have to check for. I just gave it a, a starting value. So we're going to ask a question. If the line we just rent in, read in, is equal to the word rooms. Remember, we have to use the dot equals method for comparing strings. Otherwise, if we use the double equal sign, we're comparing the uh, memory address of where strings live. In this case, actually, it would still work because we are storing just literals uh, for those values. But this is the more correct thing. We are asking, does the string line contain the same contents as the word rooms. If it does, we'll go ahead and set our current mode equal to rooms. 
else if line dot equals exits we'll set our current mode equal to exits make sure i said exits not exit yeah i said exits else if it's neither of those if i didn't just read in the word rooms or i didn't read in the word exits it must be one of the strings associated with the current mode that i'm working with all right so that means line either looks like something like this or line looks like something like this make sense it's one of those two formats if it's not our label guys exits or rooms so else i know line equals so i'll put a little comment here line holds the contents of either a room or an exit depending on current the current mode Okay, so I'm going to ask the question if current mode dot equals rooms we're going to build a room object and add it to a collection of rooms. else current mode and actually why don't we just specify it we'll say else if the current mode is exits we need to parse the exit string and build an exit we didn't need to parse the room string since the room string only has a single string in it we're only storing the name for a room where exits we actually have four pieces of information contained in this string okay So we'll just put a little note in here. Parsing means to break out the four pieces of info so we can actually build an exit object. Okay, so in our example here, and actually let's I'm just gonna put some print lens here. System dot out dot print lens build room I'll say build exit this guy. So just proving we're getting into the right if else statement. So we're going to read through our file line by line by line. And we will, uh, uh, and actually let's do, change mode to rooms. Change mode to exits. So let's make sure as we are walking through this file, we should see that we're changing our mode to rooms here. Build a room, build a room, build a room, yada, 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 yada. Change mode to exits, build an exit, build an exit. 
That's what it should say currently, proving that we are getting into the right categories as we're walking through this, uh, this file. And then we'll just put an extra little thing at the end. My map should be built. Stuff like that. All right, so right off the bat, changing mode to rooms. I'm still concatenating on uh, the line. I'm still concatenating on the line up here. That's okay. All right, so right off the bat, we're going to change mode to rooms. Then we're going to, uh, where's my build room up there for laser cutter? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Leftover from the previous thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Mode to rooms, build this room, build this room, yada, 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 yada. Changing mode to exits, build this exit, build this exit. All right. So we're getting into the right uh, um, categories to potentially build the right stuff here. So now what we want to look at today is how can I handle something like that how do i break something like that up into its individual pieces all right so we're going to look at kind of an algor algorithmic way of doing it based on just the tools we currently know and then we'll look at a pre-built in uh, way of doing this with uh with java all right so we know that if i'm in this if statement dealing with the exit that my string looks like this and I want to be able to get it so that I have the laser cutter piece, I have the north piece, I have the lobby piece, and I have the south piece. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write some code. So I'll add a method down here. Now I got a couple of options here. So I can write something that is uh, it's going to be called parse exit. Now I could choose to store my individual pieces because when we're thinking about our exit here, this guy is a collection of strings, right? Okay, so these are pieces of the exit. Now I could do an array list where we don't necessarily know how many of these pieces we're gonna have, right? But I actually do know that I'm gonna have exactly four pieces to my exit. Does that make sense? So I actually could do this as an array correct? Because I know how many pieces I'm going to have. So I'm going to say I'm going to return a string array. And I'll go ahead and say parse exit. All right, I'm going to pass it an exit string. And I'll go ahead just to see so you can see how these things are being passed around. I'll say something like system.out.println about to parse my exit string. So now we're about to build an ability here. And just so it'll run for the moment, I'm just going to have it return null because I have to return something. So up here, if I'm about to build an exit, I want to call parse exit, passing it the line.
I'm going to call this guy exit parse. So I'm going to call my parse exit method, passing it, oops, passing it the line I read in, and it's going to return for me a string array. Now, because I've written this method inside of my class main, this guy is going to be a static method. And I'm actually also going to make it private. Because we only need access to this inside of my main method as the way I'm writing it right now. We might decide to hide some of these things inside of another class later on. But for right now, we're just doing it all inside main. And I only need to access this parse uh, exit thing from within main. Okay, so now any time that we should be building an exit, we're going to call upon our parse exit, passing it the thing that we want to parse, and it's going to tell us you're about to parse stuff. Okay, but now when we notice here, it is a static method, which means it belongs to the class. How do we call class methods? Using a na the name of the class in which the method was defined. This will work as is. I don't have to use the name of the class in which this method was defined because I'm currently in the static context of that class. But just because you don't have to, I'd still encourage you to always do it. So since parse exit is a main, it is a static method, I will use the name of the class that that method was defined in to call that method. If you always follow that rule, you'll never be wrong. You don't have to worry about, do I have to use it or not? All right. So it's good to know that, oh, I'm in a static context currently in the main class, and I'm trying to call a static method in the main class. So I don't need to do anything extra because I'm already in the right frame of mind, if you, if you will. That doesn't mean it's wrong to call upon that thing. All right. So let's just prove that it's calling down this thing and we're about to parse some stuff that we kind of passed the buck. So near the end here, we are about to parse this string, about to parse this string. Okay, so we're calling that uh, function, that method with the comma delimited string that we invented. All right, so now we wanna come up with a way of walking through this string all right and right now just as an example oh, let me just that string looks like that as an example all right We want to walk through this string and fill up our array that we're going to return with bucket zero being this guy, bucket one being this guy, bucket two being this guy, bucket three being this guy. Knowing only what we know right now. I promise you there's some things built into Java that make this quite easy. Okay, but we're not going to use them yet. I'll introduce them, but we're not going to use them yet. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to do something algorithmically. We're going to say, I know I need to walk through every single character of this string. And I'm just going to start building up strings until I hit a comma. As soon as I hit a comma, I know that the string that I've been building up needs to go into my collection of strings. And then I start over on my next string I'm building up until I hit a comma, then I put the string that I've been building up into bucket one of my array. Then I start over, I start building up my next string, I put it in, hit the comma, I put it in bucket two. Building in my next string, I never actually hit a comma, but I get to the end of my string, so I know I have one last string that I built up, and I need to throw that into my final bucket of my uh, array. Okay, so kind of following what we're trying to do here. All right, so um, 
We're not going to do tons and tons and tons of time for this just for the time period. But before I just show you it, let's take about five minutes. Try to write this algorithm yourself. You're not turning anything in just for your own benefit. Try to write the algorithm that will fill up. I'll just go ahead and give you the string array. Let's call this guy exit parts is equal to a new string array four. So you want to write the code that fills exit parts up with the four parts of the exit. And ultimately, we're going to return exit parts. Okay, so take a couple minutes and try to write that. Go ahead. Uh, where? This guy? The scope of this guy lives inside of main. Scope of this guy lives inside of parse exit. So they have the same name, but two different variables.
All right. <clears throat> so I realize you maybe, maybe didn't finish it, but hopefully you got far enough along to kind of see the direction you were going. So let's look at what this might look like. So we're going to need a string to hold our current part. Okay, we're going to start this guy off as the empty string because we're going to be building up a part until we hit a comma. Then we'll store that part, then we'll empty the thing that we're building up, then start building it up again, so on and so forth. Any way you cut it, we're going to have to go through every character in this string. So we're going to say for it i is equal to zero, i is less than exit string dot length i plus plus. So this will take an i on a voyage through all the indexes of my string. And then I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to say if exit string dot char at i is equivalent to a comma. If I'm looking at a comma, I need to store the current thing I've been building up in my exit parts. Now I'm going to need to keep track of where I currently am in exit parts for storing my stuff. So I'll go ahead and say exit parts pause. Start that off at zero. So I'm going to be storing my first exit part at bucket zero, the next one at bucket one, that's one at bucket two, so on and so forth. So if I'm looking at a comma, I'll go ahead and say exit parts at bucket exit parts pause is equal to current part, the thing I've presumably been building up. I haven't actually built it yet, but if I'm not looking at a comma, I'm going to be building it. After I add a part to my exit parts array, I will set current part equal to the empty string. And I'll set exit parts pause to one bigger than it used to be. Because the first thing I'm going to put at bucket zero. So then the next time I'm going to place it at bucket one. The next time I'm going to place it at bucket two. Okay, but only when I hit a comma. Only when I had a hit a comma do I say I must be done building up the current string I've been building one character at a time. And now I hit a comma, so I'm going to store that guy and then reset him and move on to the next one. So if I'm not looking at a comma, that must mean I am looking at a character that is part of the current part, the current token that I'm building up. So I'll go ahead and say current part is equal to current part concatenated with exit string dot char at i. I'll just take the current character I'm looking at and I'll put it onto the end of my token that I'm in the middle of building up. I'm not ready to store it yet. I'm processing it currently. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. All right. So this else says, just keep building up the current token. This if says, when I've gotten to the end of my current token, that means I see a comma. And by the way, don't put commas in your room names. That will <laughs> cause a problem in, the, in this particular uh, situation. Um, so room names can't have commas in them since we've decided to separate our uh, um, exits with commas, exit parts with commas. That's actually kind of the reason why we have more modern ways of like JSON for representing data, because then we can um, tactically you could have a comma uh, in something because of the way JSON works. But for us, we can do our little halfway here. Go ahead. Start off as the empty string. And this is where I'm adding stuff to it right here. Oh, yeah, I just, it's a little bit misleading because of how I do my if and not my else, because really I'm looking for the end of the token first. 
So I'm saying, hey, look, if I hit a comma, that means I finished building the thing that I presumably am going to be building. And if that's the case, store the current version of current part, zero it out. The next guy I'm going to store in a different bucket. Inside the else, this is where I'm actually building it up. If I'm looking at anything except a comma, I'm just going to keep building up one character at a time. Okay. Now, when I exit this for loop here, I'm actually, I actually have one last part stuck inside of the, um, uh, stuck inside of my current part because I didn't hit that final comma, right? As I was walking through this, I was building up south in this example. There was no comma to hit. I just ran out of characters in my string. So I have one last piece stuck in there. So what am I going to do with that? I'll go ahead and store it in my last bucket. And I don't have to increment exit parts pause it anymore because I'm, I'm done storing stuff. It went from bucket zero, one, two, and three, right? For my four parts. I can change it to four if I want, but I'm never going to use that variable. And I don't need to uh, zero out current part either because I'm not building up any more parts. This was my final hurrah here. All right, and once I have that, I can go ahead and return my array of parts. Make sense? So back out here, after I get my exit part, so this is where I'm going to receive that array of parts. Let's prove that I have my individual parts here. So I'll just do a system dot out actually i'll do a for loop for int i is equal to zero i is less than exit parts dot length no parentheses on length of an array i plus plus and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say system dot out dot print when the parts are And we're going to go ahead and just print out the individual parts from exit parts. System.out.println exit parts at bucket I. So when I should be building an exit, I'm going to announce that I'm building an exit out of this line. I'll go ahead and call my parse exit, passing at that line, which should break my individual parts up. I'll receive those parts as the string array. Then I'm going to prove that I got the right pieces. I'm going to say the parts are, and here's my for loop. I go through and print them, print them out. Missing All right, so here's about here I'm about to parse laser cutter north lobby south. My parts are laser cutter north lobby south. So I got those pieces. Here's my next exit about to parse esports west lobby east. The parts that I found were esports west lobby east. All right, so I accurately built up my collection of. Um, uh, the pieces that are required for an exit. Make sense? Okay, so now one hint here I'm going to give you, and then I'll talk about the homework assignment. But keep in mind that right now, at this point, when I get to my exits, I should have already built rooms for all these guys and probably put them in a collection, maybe an array list of rooms. And in there, I might have a room called lobby. Its name is lobby. Uh, in order to build an exit, though, an exit requires that I have two room objects. So I'm going to need to somehow convert the name of a room into the actual room that I've previously built. I have to search through that array list to find a room that has the name that matches the guy I want. Make sense? 
So now that I have these four pieces, I have to go and grab the two actual rooms with the room names, and then I can build my exit. All right. So for our homework, let me save this and then share this so I get this guy. The homework given this as your starting point. Finish filling out the maps.txt file with the rest of the exits, either for our uh, map of the computer science department, or if you were creative and you made your own map, that's fine too. Just as long as it's roughly 14 rooms with a good number of exits. I don't care what it is. Just make sure it's roughly at the same size. Don't just have two rooms. All right. Um, so finish filling out that. Then read in the rooms and exits from that file and actually build instances of all the rooms. and all of the exit objects and store them in array lists. You should have one array list with all of the rooms in it. You should have one array list with all of the exits in it. I'll put a little hint here. Hint, you might search this array list for the actual room object that matches the name of the room you are looking for from your exit. Submit a link to the code and the self. All right, questions what I'm asking you to do? Shouldn't be too bad. I've given you most of the pieces. Now you just have to do the kind of the follow through. Go ahead. You can delete it or you can start a, another project, whatever, whatever you want is fine. All right, any other questions? I can just do Friday. Might sound difficult, but it's, and it should be challenging, but it's actually not that much work. All right, I'll see everybody on Friday.